Does this game look familiar to you? You might have seen this floating around on the internet, and maybe you didn't exactly know what the context was, but this is probably the most wanted 3DS game right now by the hacking community. And of course you're wondering, why the hell is that? Well my friends, it's because that's the way hacking works. Now, before I explain it in further detail, let's just go over to Wololo's site and check this out. Now, this is something that I wanted to cover from days ago, but so much had happened with real life stuff with me that I didn't really get on top of it until now. But the title of this video did not mislead you. The 3DS is hacked and you can run homebrew applications on it. ROMs are a bit more iffy, but homebrew applications are a definite. Now, here we go. Nintendo 3DS exploit game revealed. Smealem's exploit game is. Now, if you remember from a couple of weeks ago, I did a video covering uh, 3DS homebrew that Smealem managed to pull off on the 3DS. Now, it was kind of like still in progress, and I thought it would be a lot longer until it was released to the public, but lo and behold, it was only a few weeks. I thought it would have been at least maybe six months or something like that. So we do have a public release of that hack that I covered in my last video. And the game that you can access the exploit through is the game Cubic Ninja. Now, Cubic Ninja is some shitty game that was released a long time ago for the 3DS, made by Ubisoft, of course. <laughs> yeah, it looks similar to some Rayman shit. The game itself is not important, however. Smealum said that it does not matter if you are using the retail version of the game or if you buy it from the Nintendo eShop. Smee added that the game only exists in the Japanese eShop, so a retail cartridge will be will be your choice for this exploit, I assume. The game is around £7 slash $10, but this will most likely change very, very soon. Note for Molo, in Japan, the game can be found for around 1800 to 3000 yen. So, you know, as you guys can see here, the game is definitely not that expensive. Well, at least not that expensive when this article came out. This was November 18th, so we're looking at almost 10 days later. And um, I'll explain where the game's pricing is at now. Now, update from Wololo. Since this piece of news was posted one hour ago, the game has been multiplied by 2.5 on Amazon and other websites. If history serves well, I would not be surprised to see it go up to $80 within 24 hours. And sure enough, my friends, if you try to find this shitty game now, you aren't going to find it for that price of $10 or seven pounds. No, you're gonna find it for $40, $60, $80. This is such a difficult game to get your hands on now due to the fact that it can be used with the Smealum exploit. A lot of people know this news. The hacking scene is all on top of this. So naturally, if there's a game that's released somewhat like this, where you can take advantage and use homebrew on your 3DS, people are gonna be on top of it, man. I guarantee you. So that's why this game now is really difficult to get. And there's even some more bullshit with GameStop using this to their advantage to price the game at insane levels, man. And of course, I'm not surprised because, you know, it's GameStop, but still, where's the dignity at? So the exploit should be working with any kind of regional version of the game. So that's another, that's another, you know, good thing there. Um, a European 3DS with a European 3DS game. But what can we do with it? And which firmwares and devices does it support? And that's usually the question when it comes to homebrew applications running on 3DS and with um, potential ROMs as well too. The Gateway 3DS needs a really old firmware, so it's not really that practical to use it for people who like manage to want to update their 3DS every day or use the more regular features or even connect to the internet. This is a classic save data exploit like we know from our beloved PS Vita or the older days of the PSP. You have to buy, retail or digital shop version, a necessary exploit game in order to run the exploit on your device. So if you're wondering how the hack works with this stupid game, you, there's basically some part of the game that allows you to go into the 3DS's code that you would not be able to access without it. So in a way, the game serves as a, it serves as a passageway through the 3DS's massive defense. And at some point in creating that passageway, the game has a glitch where the 3DS can be entered into through, it's kind of crazy to explain, but think about this, think about this. You have like a medieval palace, which is filled to the teeth with guards, defense units, all that shit, right? But the palace manages to let like certain groups through, scholars, um, nobles, whatever. So let's just say that the palace on Tuesday is allowing a certain group of scholars to come through. Now, someone who can manipulate or kind of destroy the palace from the inside or kind of like change up things is actually hidden with that group of scholars. And once the scholars are let into the palace, then that one person who's going to go there to manipulate shit can sneak in now that he's inside the palace and you know kind of get lost in one of the 
one of the chinks in the palace's armor. And that, my friends, is how the Cubic Ninja game works with a 3DS, allowing you to get homebrew applications running on that bitch. It's still a little bit tough to understand. I can understand if you're still a bit confused about it, but that's basically how it works. So, you cannot download it for free from the internet, and people cannot share their version of the game with you if they have a digital version. Retail works, though. You have to buy the exploit game. Otherwise, you cannot use this exploit on your 3DS. The exploit is confirmed to work on all 3DS system software versions as of version 9.20-2.0, um, and it should also support any of the hardware revisions of the 3DS family. So this is another big thing that has people going out and buying this game in droves simply because it just supports it supports pretty much every single 3DS out there. Um, I don't know how they managed to pull this off and how Nintendo hasn't managed to patch this yet, but the 3DS will be able to play every single version. I mean, I mean, excuse me, this hack will be supported on every single version of the 3DS. So whatever your firmware number is, it's got it. Now, this would include the 3DS, the XL, the 2DS, the new 3DS, and the new 3DS XL. Basically, any Nintendo handheld device that can play 3DS games is supported. But what can we do with the exploit? If you remember the Wii Homebrew channel, which is a similar style channel, for all kinds of homebrews, our well-known um, visual half-byte loader, then you will most likely know what the 3DS homebrew launcher will be able to do. Smealem exploit is a userland exploit that allows us to execute homebrews via the 3DS homebrew channel. It does not enable piracy in the form of 3DS ROMs, but it will enable you to use homebrew and classic emulators for older systems like Starks and the 3DS um, Nintendo, um, Nintendo Entertainment System emulator. So, basically, ROMs, like I said, they're not really going to be supported by this. So if you're thinking that you're going to be able to pirate all the 3DS games, nah, nah, nah. calm that down. You won't, but you can do a hell of a lot of other stuff with it. You can play emulators on it for different games, different consoles. So I mean, that's kind of cool in itself. Now, what will it enable you to do on your 3DS will be known when the files have been officially released. Soon those files will be released, and they were actually released, um, I think, a day or two after this article came out. So we're pretty much done with this. And now this is the page where you can get this hack. Now, sadly, I do not have Cubic Ninja. I was not able to get my hands on a copy early, so I won't be able to show you firsthand experience. Uh, I'm trying to see if there's somewhere that I can get this game for a reasonable price, and if I can, then I will buy it and I'll show you guys this hack myself. But until then, I'm pretty much looking outside like everybody else is, you know, and right now it's looking pretty cool, but, um, so here is the, um, oh, sorry about that. I know in some of my last videos, my Skype going off made some of you guys think your Skype went off, but yeah, so here is the website where you'll be able to take advantage of Cubic Ninja and use it for 3DS homebrew exploits. So what is Ninja Hacks? Ninja Hacks is a piece of software that allows you to run unsigned code on your 3DS. In practice, this means being able to run homebrew, applica homebrew applications such as games, tools, and emulators. To see it in action, look no further. So we'll definitely be checking this link out very soon. Um, let's see here. What do I need to use Ninja Hacks? You need exactly three things to run unsigned code on your console. A 3DS or an XL or a 2DS console with a firmware version between 4.0.07 and 9.2.0-20. So, just out of curiosity, I was talking all that shit about how you'll be fine regardless of anything, but I need to actually check myself for my 3DS and make sure that I have a firmware version that's supported by this. I think it supports all the latest versions though, so um, let's take a look here. Like so I'm saying, if my 3DS is still supported and Nintendo hasn't patched this by now, I'm going to be fucking shocked because this is usually stuff they're on top of. If you don't know what I mean, Nintendo usually has people going around checking for if 3DS exploits are out, so I mean, usually they patch those shits right away, but... Hmm. Alright, so I'm just going to my settings, and I see if I can... Oh, wow! Alright guys, so, um, as you can... Well, I'm gonna show you soon, let me just turn it you know, by now I should realize that I could turn everything on my, you know, notification and silent whenever I do videos. No, st st still, still don't realize to do that. But um, I'm just going to show you guys so you can see in HD, HD, that my 3DS version is. Alright, and there you have it, as you guys can see right there. My 3DS version is 9.2.0-20U, United States. And, um... That's supported right here, as you guys can see. So we are already starting this thing off on a good note. 
Um, so now that we know that information, um, I really do want to get my hands on this game. I just, I just, I'm not willing to pay eighty dollars for it. So, actually, I am. I would be willing. In fact, yeah, guys. I mean, I, I'm saying that I wouldn't, but no, I would be more than willing. I mean, it's for the YouTube channel. It's for the hacking prowess. It's to see some cool homebrew apps in your 3DS. And trust me, when you guys see the kind of homebrew apps you can run, you'll be somewhat impressed. There'll be some people that want to get this thing right away. If I had eighty dollars to spend, I would spend it. But um, I use a lot of my money to help my mom recently, and I'm trying to move out as well too. So yeah, I'm pretty much broke as a joke. But um. All right, so it's gonna work with your 3DS because mine is fully updated. Now, the scary thing is that Nintendo releases a patch and that's the only reason why I probably am not spending the money to get this thing also. I mean, the first off, I don't have it. The second off, if Nintendo patches this thing right away, then that's pretty much $80 down the drain and a shitty game in your library and you don't want either of those things. An SD card capable or compatible with your 3DS, the one that it comes with, of course, will do. A copy of the game Cubic Ninja, either from retail or eShop. Details available in US, European, and Japanese. eShop was Japanese only. So, your 3DS, an SD card, and Cubic Ninja is all you need to run homebrew applications right now. So, let's see how you run it. So, how do I run Ninjax? Go to the Get Ninjax session of this page and enter your console's firmware version. Hit submit, and you will get your own Ninjax QR code. Download the homebrew starter kit and extract it at the root of your SD card. Alternatively, you may choose to only download the homebrew launcher menu executable and place it at the root of your SD card. No matter what, after this step, you should have a file named boot.3dsx put at the um, root of your SD card. Make sure your 3DS's Wi-Fi connection is enabled and connected to the internet. This is important. So, unlike most other hacks and exploits that you probably might find in your computer, this one wants you to stay connected to the internet. How, how comfortable. Now, start Cubic Ninja on your console, choose Create, then QR Code, and then finally scan QR Code. Scan the code, and this might take a couple of tries, make sure you fill up as much of your 3DS screen with the QR Code. So you're going to basically be taking a picture of the code while you're using your 3DS. We'll probably be able to find video footage of this on YouTube. Follow the screen, the screen um, instructions. You may choose not to install the exploit to your game card save data, though doing so is not recommended. Now, once Ninjax is installed to your game card, just go back to the QR code menu and it'll run automatically. You can now run homebrew apps on your 3DS. Simply drag and drop application folders into the 3DS directory that was created on your SD card. So what I'm wondering is that, do you have to leave um, Cubic Ninja inside of your 3DS in order to use the hack? Let's see here. You have to scan the QR code, follow the on-screen instructions, and then once Ninjax is installed to your game card, go back to the QR code menu and it'll run automatically. Okay, so you do have to keep Cubic Ninja into your 3DS, I think, because you have to go to the QR code menu in order to run the homebrew. So that's something that only exists in Cubic Ninja, so boom, okay. So now this is where you go to get Ninjax. Now it, it also has a section telling you how to write software for it and just giving you credits to everyone that made this thing. And so um, pretty cool stuff, actually. We'd also like to thank everybody. So now, Homebrew Highlights. This is the page that everyone's wondering about. What exactly will I be able to do if I do get this game and I do start this hack? What happens afterwards? You know, what will I be able to achieve with it? So you'll be able to do things like this. Blarg SNES is a net emulator being developed by Staple Butter. It's open source, runs most games really well, and it has sound. Better yet, Staple Butter is actively working on it and it keeps getting better every day. So any SNES games that you want to play, this has you covered. Now, you also have 3DS Craft, as the name indicates, is a 3DS application of Minecraft. So, while it's currently a little bit more of a basic version of creative mode, it holds great promise as it already has infinite world saving, loading, and stereoscopic 3D rendering. So, you'll be able to get Minecraft on your 3DS, which is actually pretty cool. Um, I think that's a great homebrew application. I would really want to try this out myself. And then Game Yob is a Game Boy emulator currently being developed by Dren. Much like Blarg SNES, it's open source, has sound, it continues to be in development. It can run almost any game near perfectly and gives users a wide array of options to choose from. So, once again guys, you gotta keep in mind that there's a lot of people who would love these things on their 3DS. And this is already at launch, so you know, there could be a lot of potential homebrew applications that could be like, like game breaking for the 3DS, that can turn it into a whole new beast. So let's just see. Um, we can also go here for more homebrew applications, so let's see. 
There's emulators here, a Super Nintendo emulator you can download for your 3DS right now, Game Boy Color emulator, an NES emulator, um, a simple and slow Chip 8 emulator, um, you can run an FTP server, holy shit! Um, useful for testing out new homebrew versions without swapping the SD card. Damn, man, they, they got stuff for it, you know? So, you know, launch day, maybe this doesn't have as much stuff as you would hope, but consider the fact that this only just happened. Now, let's just see something in action really quick. Oh, let me get my headphones in. So, it's gonna show you Smealum. I think it's gonna show you the Smealum hack in progress with this guy who has Cubic Ninja. So, let's just see how it works. Uh, I should have gotten my headphones out earlier, but um, you know me. I'm always prepared for my videos, right, guys? Um, okay, so let's just actually play it for now. Alright, so there's the game, Cubit Ninja running on his um, 3DS. For some reason it looked different on the right one. Alright, let's see. Oh, and you have to take a picture of the QR code, like I said. So once you take a picture of the code, then it should start the hack. Yup, holy shit. Wow. What the hell? And there we go. The homebrew launcher right there. You have all your homebrew apps, everything right there. These guys have all this like ability to make these custom launchers and whatnot, but they ain't got no ability to get a capture card. Like, come on, son. I mean, no, no, no offense, Milam, no offense, but goddamn. And now we're looking at 3DS craft right now. 3D. And you know they're right. It does look promising. You know, of course, this is going to be probably the most basic version or attempt at Minecraft ever, but. Hey, the fact that we got something and it runs this smooth, like look at that. It's pretty much lagless. Granted, it's not really loading much, but I mean, hey. Controls are much more comfortable with two hands available. Yeah, I bet. I fucking bet. That music, though. But yeah, so it's basically like they said, creative mode, so. And it's also in 3D too. The 3DS's Ninja, Cubic Ninja already has Ninja Hacks installed. No need for QR code or Wi-Fi. Okay. So once you already have it installed, all you gotta do is go to Cubic Ninja, and go to the menu, hit that QR code button, and you're good. And this is just basically showing off a lot of the homebrews that are available. I would really love to see a Game Boy Advance emulator on this thing. Hopefully that can happen soon. Because if you can get a Game Boy Advance emulator running on this, then we can play the best game for the Game Boy Advance ever made. Sonic Battle. Yeah. But alright guys, so this is the extent of the Smealum hack exploit slash whatever you want to call its power. So, um, what do you do to think of this whole thing? Will you be trying to get yourself a copy of the um, Cubic Ninja game? Right now, currently, I'm going to be waiting, but then again, considering that this game is so old, there may not be any new versions of it made, so the price will probably only keep going up because the, the whole supply and demand thing. If more stuff for the Smealum exploit continues to come out, then that means that it's going to make it more valuable, and that means that the Smealum, um, the, the, the game is going to become a lot more expensive, so I probably should get my hands on it as soon as possible. But I'm hoping that Smealum reveals another game that can be used for this exploit later on. Something that can also be bypassed in the 3DS security. Hopefully it can work out, but if it doesn't, then I guess I'll just be, you know, tugging my dick along with everybody else, wondering what you could do with this thing. But <laughs> I'll talk to you dudes in the next video, though. Take care of yourselves, and of course, as usual, please have yourself a damn good one.